SpaceX just got blindsided. While they're stuck with complex multi-launch refueling nightmares, Blue Origin dropped a 90-day moon landing plan that's so simple it's genius. Their 8-meter lander needs just one launch to reach the moon, no assembly required. China's scrambling with 2026 plans, SpaceX pushed to 2026, but Blue Origin, summer 2025. How did the slow company suddenly become the front runner? Let's dive right in. Here's the bombshell that changes everything. While the world was distracted by SpaceX's exploding rockets and China's grand announcements, Blue Origin quietly secured a $3.4 billion NASA contract in May 2023. Not for some distant future project, for a moon lander launching this summer. Think about that timeline. SpaceX has been developing Starship since 2016, eight years of testing, explosions, and setbacks. China's been planning Chang'e missions for over a decade. Blue Origin question mark. They announced their Mark 1 lunar mission in March 2024 with a 12 to 16 month deadline. Either Jeff Bezos has lost his mind or Blue Origin has been playing the longest game in space history. Everyone's been asking the wrong question. It's not how did Blue Origin catch up. It's when did they actually start? While SpaceX grabbed headlines with Starship belly flops and rapid unscheduled disassemblies, Blue Origin was doing something completely different. They were building hardware that actually works. Their planet vac sampling system, already operating on the moon's surface. Their Lister drilling equipment, successfully deployed in collecting data. But here's where it gets really interesting. Blue Origin's Mark I isn't some revolutionary new design they dreamed up last year. It's the culmination of over a decade of quiet development. Remember, they've been working on lunar landers since 2011. SpaceX only started seriously pursuing moon missions after NASA's 2019 Artemis announcement. Who's really behind schedule here? Let's talk numbers that will blow your mind. SpaceX's Starship weighs 5,000 tons fully fueled. Blue Origin's Mark I, just three tons of cargo capacity, standing only eight meters tall. That's pathetic, SpaceX fans will scream. Starship can carry 100 plus tons. Here's what they're missing. Blue Origin doesn't need to carry 100 tons to win this race. They need to carry three tons and actually land it successfully. Think of it this way. You're racing to deliver a pizza. SpaceX built a semi-truck that can carry 1,000 pizzas, but keeps jackknifing on turns. Blue Origin built a motorcycle that carries one pizza, but always arrives on time. Which strategy wins the first delivery? The Mark I's single launch architecture is pure genius disguised as simplicity. New Glenn launches it directly into lunar transfer orbit with all fuel on board. No orbital refueling, no multi-launch coordination, no assembly required, just launch coast for three days and land. Everyone assumes SpaceX's experience gives them an edge. But what if that experience is actually holding them back? SpaceX is trapped by their own success. They built Starship to be the ultimate space truck. Massive, reusable, capable of anything. But capable of anything means optimized for nothing. Their moon mission requires 10 to 15 tanker launches to fuel one Starship perfect orbital, refueling in deep space. Landing a 50-meter rocket with millimeter precision. Doing all this with zero room for error. Every additional complexity multiplies failure risk exponentially. SpaceX needs 15 things to go perfectly. Blue Origin needs one. But there's something even more devastating for SpaceX. Their recent Falcon 9 failure, caused by a loose sensor cable. After 300 plus successful flights, they lost a rocket to a wire. Now imagine that same reliability requirement spread across 15 Starship launches for one moon mission. The math is brutal. Chang'e 7 represents everything ambitious about China's space program and everything that could go wrong. They're launching an orbiter, relay satellite, lander, rover, and flying hopper probe in one mission. It's like trying to land a small city on the moon. The mission weighs 8,200 kilograms with 415 kilograms of scientific instruments. It's technologically impressive, but here's the terrifying reality. 
If any one component fails, the entire mission dies. China's engineers are brilliant, but brilliance doesn't overcome the fundamental rule of complex systems. More parts mean more failure modes. Blue Origin looked at China's approach and said, what if we just didn't do that? Here's what nobody's talking about. Blue Origin isn't just building a lander. They're building a manufacturing philosophy that could dominate space for decades. Their best part is no part approach mirrors what Tesla did to the auto industry. While traditional car makers added more features and complexity, Tesla stripped everything down to essentials and optimized for production. Now look who's winning. Blue Origin's Mark I demonstrates the same thinking. Instead of building the most capable lander, they built the most manufacturable one. Instead of maximum performance, they optimized for maximum reliability. But here's the kicker. This isn't even their final form. The Mark I is just proof of concept for their Mark II crew lander. If they can prove single launch architecture works for cargo, scaling up for astronauts becomes straightforward engineering, not revolutionary breakthrough. Summer 2025 is six months away. Let's be brutally honest about where each player stands. SpaceX, still working on orbital refueling. Starship's last test flight saw multiple engine failures and an explosion. Their timeline keeps slipping. 2024 became 2025, then 2026. Each test reveals new problems requiring months to solve. China, Chang'e 7 slipped to 2026 after technical complications. Their mission complexity requires everything working perfectly on first try. No pressure test flights, no iterative improvement. Blue Origin, MK1-S N001 is in final assembly. All major systems tested, NASA payloads integrated. New Glenn rocket completed its first orbital flight. They're not developing new technology. They're executing proven designs. The math is simple. Blue Origin needs six months to execute. SpaceX needs six months just to fix their current problems. But here's the most fascinating part of the story. Blue Origin isn't just playing chess while others play checkers. They're playing psychological warfare. By announcing such an aggressive timeline, they force SpaceX and China into impossible positions. Either match Blue Origin's schedule, impossible given current timelines, or publicly admit they can't deliver on promises. SpaceX responded by pushing their timeline back to 2026. China did the same. Blue Origin suddenly looks like the only company that under-promises and over-delivers. It's strategic brilliance disguised as corporate announcements. If Blue Origin lands on the moon this summer, they don't just win a space race. They fundamentally reshape how humanity approaches space exploration. They prove that consistent engineering beats flashy innovation. They demonstrate that American companies can win through different strategies than building the biggest rockets. They established the first permanent American foothold at the moon's lunar south pole, securing access to water ice that could fuel the next century of space exploration. But most importantly, they shatter the narrative that space belongs to the bold and reckless. Sometimes the tortoise really does beat the hare. Everything comes down to one moment this summer. When Blue Origin's Mark I fires its BE-7 engine for final descent, the space industry will discover whether simplicity trumps complexity, whether execution beats innovation, whether the quiet company everyone underestimated was actually playing the smartest game all along. The clock is ticking, the race is real, and the company everyone counted out might just shock the world. But can they actually pull off the impossible? Can the slow company really beat the giants everyone expected to win? In just months, we'll have our answer. So here we are. The company everyone wrote off as too slow is about to rewrite space history this summer. Blue Origin proved that sometimes the best strategy isn't building the biggest rocket, it's building the smartest one. While SpaceX chases headlines with explosions and China plans impossibly complex missions, Blue Origin quietly mastered the art of actually delivering. They turned simplicity into their super weapon. But this story is just beginning. If Blue Origin succeeds, they'll prove that consistent engineering beats flashy innovation every single time. The space industry will never be the same. What do you think? Can the underdog really pull off the impossible? Are we about to witness the biggest upset in space history? Let me know your predictions in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the space race, 
make sure to subscribe for the latest updates because trust me, you won't want to miss what happens next. The countdown to history has begun. Who's your money on? SpaceX is risking it all. They're firing up Starship directly on the launch tower, the same tower worth $500 million that catches rockets. One explosion like Ship 36's blast, the entire tower becomes twisted metal. That's not a two-month delay, that's a full-year setback. So why is Elon gambling everything on this insane test? Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody saw coming. When Ship 36 exploded at the Massey site, it wasn't just another rocket failure. It was a 500-ton TNT equivalent blast that sent shockwaves through SpaceX's entire timeline. The explosion was so violent it scattered debris across miles of Texas countryside, racking up $300 million in total losses. But here's the twisted part. That catastrophic failure might have just saved SpaceX from an even bigger disaster. After witnessing that destruction, SpaceX faced an impossible choice. Wait for Massey to be rebuilt, a process that would take until September at minimum, essentially wasting an entire quarter when they have 25 flights approved for this year. Or take the nuclear option, conduct the static fire test directly on Pad A, risking their most valuable infrastructure in the process. They chose the nuclear option. Right now, Ship 37 sits fully fueled on the same launch tower that catches billion-dollar rockets. We're talking about placing what is essentially a 5,000-ton bomb directly on top of SpaceX's crown jewel. One COPV failure, that's the high-pressure tank that caused Ship 36 explosion, and Mechazilla becomes twisted scrap metal overnight. But SpaceX isn't just gambling blindly. They've been preparing for this moment in ways that would shock you. On July 6th, something extraordinary happened at SpaceX's McGregor facility. A nearby camera captured what looked like a controlled explosion, white vapor shooting 30 meters skyward, and a dark object launched into the air. This wasn't an accident. This was SpaceX deliberately destroying pressure vessels to understand exactly how they fail. In burst testing, engineers push COPVs beyond their design limits using nitrogen, helium, and cryogenic liquids until they explode. It's controlled destruction to prevent uncontrolled catastrophe. Since the Ship 36 incident, SpaceX has identified the root cause and implemented fixes for Ship 37. But here's where it gets interesting. They're not just fixing the problem. They're using this dangerous test to revolutionize their entire operation. Why would they risk everything for one static fire test? This isn't about Ship 37. This is about data. By conducting the static fire directly on the launch pad, SpaceX is testing every single component of their integrated system. The modified ring stand, the redesigned quick disconnect arms, the entire infrastructure chain. One test gives them real-world data they can use to upgrade every launch pad, making their entire operation more resilient. Think about it. Instead of just testing an engine, they're testing the future of spaceflight operations. Every sensor reading, Every pressure measurement, every thermal signature from this test becomes invaluable data for scaling up to their plan for launch pads, two at Starbase, two in Florida. But there's an even bigger pressure driving this insane gamble, NASA's $4 billion Artemis contract. Every day of delay brings them closer to missing the 2026 moon landing deadline. SpaceX isn't just racing against time. They're racing against contracts that could make or break their Mars colonization dreams. While everyone focuses on the explosion risk, SpaceX is quietly deploying their most revolutionary technology yet. Ship 37 will be powered by Raptor 3 engines, machines so advanced that when SpaceX first revealed them, industry experts thought they were fake. Raptor 3 produces 280 tons of thrust, 30% more than the original Raptor, while weighing 100 kilograms less. The engine looks like a skeleton compared to its predecessors because SpaceX eliminated thousands of parts through revolutionary 3D printing techniques. They've integrated cooling channels directly into the metal structure, eliminating the need for external heat shields entirely. But here's the mind-bending part. 
These engines are so efficient, they don't need the fire suppression systems that cause Flight 1's explosion. The very technology powering Ship 37 makes the static fire test safer than previous attempts. Here's where SpaceX's strategy reveals its true genius. They've already factored in losing Pad A entirely. If Ship 37 explodes and destroys Mechazilla, it might actually accelerate SpaceX's plans. Pad A was always going to need major upgrades anyway. A proper flame trench to handle Block 3 starships with 33 Raptor, three engines generating nearly 10,000 tons of thrust. An explosion would force these upgrades immediately, while Pad B takes over operations. And Pad B is closer to completion than most people realize. The massive booster quick disconnect hood that arrived last week is 50% larger than Pad A's version, designed specifically for next generation vehicles. Its modular, boxy design allows for easier maintenance and greater operational flexibility. The timing is almost too perfect. If Pad A gets destroyed, Pad B could be operational within weeks, potentially handling the debut flight of Block 3 starships by the end of the year. But there's another layer to this story that reveals just how impossible SpaceX's achievement really is. The Raptor 3 engines on Ship 37 operate at temperatures and pressures that should melt any known material. The main combustion chamber reaches 300 bar, but the pre-burners hit 600 bar, pressures that would crush a submarine. SpaceX's metallurgists have developed exotic alloys with names like SX500, materials so advanced they're essentially classified technology. But even these wonder metals would melt without SpaceX's secret cooling techniques. They pump cryogenic methane and oxygen through microscopic channels carved directly into the engine walls, creating active cooling that keeps the metal from disintegrating. This is why Raptor 3 looks so alien compared to traditional engines. Every external component has been eliminated or integrated into the main structure. The result is an engine that's simultaneously more powerful and more reliable than anything that came before. Here's what makes this static fire test truly historic. Ship 37 is fueled by methane, the same gas you use to cook dinner. But this isn't just about convenience. Methane can be produced on Mars from the atmosphere and underground ice. Every second of this test is 